People from NASA will go back to the moon in this decade on a SpaceX Starship. Elon Musk and his team at Starbase are working way too fast to make the biggest, strongest, and most capable spaceship ever. At the same time, NASA is making a plan for how to build the first stable base on the moon's surface. We will land on the moon when these two work together on Artemis II. It won't be easy, but some things are only worth doing because they are hard. And this is how it works. Let's talk about some ways that this next trip to the moon is different from the Apollo missions in the late 1960s and early 1970s. Of course, the first thing people want to know is why NASA has taken so long to go back. Have they forgotten how to land on the moon? What did they lose that would have helped them do it? It's possible that they made up the whole moon landing story. The simplest answer is that NASA lost the money they needed to land on the moon and never got it back. Right now, the US government gives NASA about $25 billion a year, which may sound like a lot, but it's not. Taking inflation and other things into account. In the late 1960s, during the Apollo age, NASA was getting around $300 billion a year. These days, that's a lot less money to work with. That's how NASA got to this point with their SLS rocket and Orion crew plane. The best they could do with the money they had on hand. Of course, we could talk a lot more about how badly the SLS was managed and how much it cost more than planned, but that's not what this video is about. Basically, what we're seeing is a rocket booster made from parts that were used on the space show and then thrown together. Then it has a slightly updated version of the old Apollo command module on top of it. As bad as the SLS and Orion technology is, it can still do some pretty cool things. We saw that for ourselves on the Artemis 1 flight when the unmanned ship went all the way to lunar orbit and back again without any big problems. What's really wrong is that all SLSC can do is send a ship to lunar orbit and back. The landing is a very important piece that needs to be added. This is where SpaceX comes in. NASA didn't have the money to build their own moon rover like they did for SLS. They ran out of things to recycle, but they could give SpaceX a few billion dollars to buy a lunar human landing system version of their amazing new spaceship rocket. SpaceX was already working on this rocket on its own to make Elon's dream of settling Mars come true. Starship was going to happen with or without help from NASA's. There's no doubt that a spaceship could put people on the moon if it could do it on Mars. It only needs a few changes to fit NASA's Artemis mission plan. In contrast to the SLS, we have not yet seen the Starship successfully finish a full mission plan. However, SpaceX has done some pretty amazing things in just three tries, such as deploying the second stage successfully into an area just below orbit. At the moment, SpaceX is only working on the part where the Starship comes back down. They are in the middle of their fourth flight test. The Moon spaceship is a little different from the other ships we've seen on the launch pad at Starbase. The current Starship's top stage is meant to get to low Earth orbit and then return to Earth in one piece. The lunar Starship, on the other hand, is going to the Moon for good. There will be no return trip. Life will be easier in many ways now that the Moon variant won't have to go through the very hot return into Earth's atmosphere. In order to do this, it got rid of the distinctive wing flaps and painted the black heat shield tiles white. But this does add a whole new problem to the spaceship puzzle. The starships that are being built now can send about 10,000, 200 metric tons of stuff into low Earth orbit. That's probably something that SpaceX could do with the tools they have now. But when we try to go any higher, things go wrong because the spaceship itself is made of stainless steel and the load inside it is very heavy. And you need more food when you're trying to move more weight. So Starship will use all of its fuel just to get to a safe orbit a few hundred kilometers above the surface. If it wants to go higher, like to the moon, it will need to be restocked. This is where things get tricky. Starship was able to safely move fuel between two different tanks on the same ship during flight test number three. For the first time ever, frozen fuel was moved from one place in space to another. This is a pretty big deal. For SpaceX's next trick, they need to move fuel from one ship to another. This means that two ships will be in orbit at the same time so they can connect and meet. Before starships can be thought of as a way to land on the moon, this has to be done a huge number of times. Here's how it works. A fully fueled top stage of a spaceship can hold up to 1,500 tons of fuel. 
and each ship can only take about 150 tons of extra mass into orbit. And at this rate, you would have to send 10 starships into space to bring enough fuel to the moon to replace just one rover. And Jessica Jansen, Vice President of Customer Operations and Integration at SpaceX, confirmed this number as late as January 2024. In a NASA Artemis update call, Jensen was asked for an exact number of trips, and he said that a single mission to the moon would require about 10. In order to be clear, she said that the number could be higher or lower based on how the first flight tests go. So let's say that everything goes as planned when the orbital is refilled. Elon Musk seems to believe it will be simple, and he has a valid point. If a SpaceX Dragon can dock with the ISS, even though they use different methods and can't talk to each other directly, then it shouldn't be a stretch for two starships run by SpaceX to be able to do the same thing. The first spaceships that land on the moon will not have any people on board. A test landing without people on board will be a big part of NASA's criteria for deciding if spaceship is safe. Right now, the plan is to send a spaceship with only its bones to land on the moon for the first time. A test car that is mostly empty and only needs to show that the landing system works. NASA says this, but Jessica Jensen made it clear on the same conference call earlier this year that the first lunar spaceship will land and then rise off the surface on the same mission. At first, this test was supposed to happen in 2024, which was a very long time away. Still, we're still hopeful that it will happen by the end of 2025 or the beginning of 2026. The second spaceship that will go to the moon will be the real deal if everything goes as planned. An area for the crew will be added, which will keep two people living on the moon for up to a week. There will also be a cargo bay for the EVA suits and other tools for exploring the moon's surface. If everything we've talked about so far actually goes as planned, and if the SLS and Orion can successfully send a person to lunar orbit and back on Artemis 2, then we can move on to the big event, Artemis 3. It's possible that this will happen in 2026. Even though it will be ridiculously hard, it can be done. Let's go with that. There's a good chance that the HLS lunar spaceship will be built and sent into space from SpaceX's site at NASA's Kennedy Space Center in the Florida Keys. Even though Starbase is cool, I think it's safe to say that NASA wants to keep working on their next moon landing right next to Starbase. It's called SLS. This is what SpaceX is already getting ready for at their launch site in Florida. It's just the ship's crew that goes into orbit. It gets more fuel at the orbital rocket store and then heads toward the moon. The Artemis trips will use a faraway path around the moon that goes backwards. They are not going to get close and circle around. Instead, they are going on a long oval-shaped path that takes them close to the moon's south pole, out into space, and back again. This saves more fuel for both the ship and the Lunar Gateway Station that will eventually be built. As the spaceship for the moon settles into orbit, the SLS gets ready to launch. The Orion capsule will meet up with the spaceship in the same lunar orbit. It will have three people on board. Could we have just sent the whole spaceship at once? Maybe, but I'm not sure that one lunar spaceship would have enough fuel to go from low Earth orbit to the moon's surface and back again on a single tank. I believe you would need a second refilling on the moon, which would likely be harder to do than using the Orion alone. But that's yet another video. Anyway, when the two spaceships finally meet, they need to dock nose cone to nose cone. It's not ideal, but this will have to do until the Lunar Gateway Station is ready to go. The spaceship is going to leave Orion and head toward the surface with two people on board. Most likely, it will use a burn from the main Raptor engines to do this. This will make the ship move more slowly, which will allow it to get caught in the moon's gravity well and be pulled to the surface. At this point, it looks like a new set of rockets that are only on the lunar spaceship will be in charge of landing. For more than one reason, the fact that they are attached a little more than halfway up the body makes sense. The weight of the Raptor is very high, and the moon has very little gravity. This means that even at minimum speed, it's possibly too much for a soft landing. Putting a landing engine at the bottom of the rocket would also make a huge cloud of dust that would make the landing zone less stable. As you go down, the ship is more stable and controlled because the engines higher up are smaller and more accurate. Do you remember the recent moon rover that fell over? It was made by smart machines. Also, it was long and thin, like a spaceship, 
so it will be very easy for it to fall over. 